again, everybody. Harry Doyle here welcoming all you friends of the feather to another season of Indians baseball. We would be honored if you would join us. This is Video Store Clerks. Welcome to the store. Just a bit outside. Inside the corner, man. Oh, shit. If you look outside, you'll see the green. The Bird, green. The birds are singing. My skin is dry as fuck. So that means spring is here in full force and in honor of which we will be talking about the 1989 classic sports film, Major League. Hello, everyone. This is the Video Store Clerks podcast. We are your clerks tonight, and my name tonight is Willie Dave's Hayes. Wow, thanks, Chad, man. <laughs> I'm the skipper, Mike Glacier. Oh, shit. This will be a fun one. I'm sure I'm going to get educated in the Major League films, so that'll be fun. But we will start the program, as we always do, with the news. Hey, why don't you fucking send the news our way? I've got good news and, and I've got bad news. The, the good news is that I can still feel my face right now. The bad news is I kind of wish I couldn't. <laughs> I don't miss winter. No, fuck winter. I was gonna say that, that, that's a little bit late. We need to get, get get rid of that that snow. We don't want no more of that snow. Yeah, we don't want no more. Don't want no more. Don't no more cold. No. no more winter. All right, let's get to it. We'll start with the box office. These are your weekend totals of this past weekend. Domestic totals of how the box office did in the movie theaters. Hmm. Coming in, at, well, it's kind of a slow. Oh, hi, Melissa. Kind of a slow box office weekend. Coming in at number one, it's probably the most terrifying movie of all time, Civil War. Opened with $26 million, kicking Godzilla Kong the New Empire down to number two. Ghostbusters Frozen Empire remains in the number three spot. It's kind of been stuck there for, I think, the last three weeks. Barely beating Kung Fu Panda Part 4. Coming in at number four, Dune Part 2 is still hanging in there at number five. Oh, Monkey Man dropped to number six. It was in the yeah, it was in the number two spot last week, down to number six. Number seven, strain the the first omen. Still not bringing in much. On. Yeah, it's hanging on. It's not bringing in much though, despite uh, positive reviews from both um, critics and audiences. It's just not making money for whatever reason. And number eight, we are not in a time warp. Shrek Part Two was re released in theaters and came in at number eight. Uh, some movie called The Long Game. Looks like it's about golf or some such. Boy well, came in at number nine. And what the fuck is this? Number 10. The name of it? <laughs> the, 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 Suga. August Detour de Day, the movie. All right. <laughs> well, it came in at number 10. I'm not kidding. That's what it's called. Good for you. Don't <laughs> CC, <laughs> Pedro. <laughs> What the frack? Oh, and other news, probably the big news last week. Um, O.J. Simpson, man. O.J. Simpson passed away. A, how old was he? 76. Battle with cancer. Lost. I choose to remember him from the Naked Gun films. Yes, Nordberg. Yes, yes. Um, in other news, oh, 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 the internet was set ablaze just the other day because it was announced that an R-rated live-action Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie is on the way based on The Last Ronin. Oh, shit! <laughs> Watch out for that one. Watch out for that one. <laughs> it's on. Um, also, Five Nights at Freddy's Part 2 has been officially greenlit by Blumhouse with an expected date of um, fall 2025. You mentioned oh. uh, 
You just okay. mentioned OJ and uh, the Naked Gun films. Did you hear that Pam Anderson is going to be in the new Naked Gun reboot with uh, Liam yes. Neeson? Yes, more Her Liam Neeson. Yeah, more strange casting with uh, remakes and reboots that nobody asked for news. Yes, the Naked Gun is still on the way. As Mike said, Pamela Anderson just recently cast in the film. I'm assuming she's going to play Liam's love interest, maybe. I'm not sure. I don't know. I, I, I don't know if this movie's going to work today. I don't know. I, mean, I would imagine she's going to be the Priscilla Presley type part, yeah. you know? Because I'm still confused if it's... if it Because at one time they said it was going to be a sequel, like Liam Neeson was going to be Frank's kid, and then it changed to... So I don't know. It's <laughs> kid from how long ago? Jesus. Yeah, right? Because, yeah, that's that's what the story was going to be at one time. I don't know if they changed that. Never or not. knew he had a son. We'll see, because I just don't know. Comedies anymore have just been, I don't know. It's a tough time for comedy today. And speaking of which, um, what studio was it? You tell us. Yeah. <laughs> Paramount and Miramax. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm flustered tonight. I'm flustered. I'm Get ready tonight's ball game. So I'm all flustered. No, but Pyramax, Par Pyramax, Pyramax, Paramount and Miramax. <laughs> They've combined. They come together for a merge. Pa Paramax. Paramax Films. They Paradox. Merge, they're shitty movies. <laughs> and, and they've come together to um, reboot the Scary Movie franchise. So mm -hmm. along the lines of The Naked Gun, they're going to give Scary Movie a try again. But I just, oh, I don't know. I hope they work. But I don't know. We'll see. They said, uh, I think they were saying that the whole entire original cast was coming back. So, oh, really? Keenan, too? Could... I don't know. We'll see. We will see. Then it might have some hope. Then it might have some hope. Um, and more remake news uh, Melrose Place will be getting a reboot as a Melrose Place reboot is in the works with Heather Locklear and more original cast members set to reboot. I never watched that show, so I don't know. A lot of people did. So, if you did, you might be interested in that. If not, I'm sorry for waiting. Nope, there's about any of this stuff. That's the end of the news. Let's move on. Oh, we can't forget about tomorrow is the 100th anniversary of AGM. Oh, the lion. Since they found it, which falls into oh. our theme of movies that we've been picking lately, because this movie here is what, 35 and. April, was it April 6th? Six or seven, something like that. Gosh, that's crazy. 1989, man, that was a good year for movies. A lot of shit came out that year. Major League, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, Tim Burton's Batman, Indiana Jones 3, Karate Kid 3, Weird Al's UHF. Um, Friday 13th Part 8. Oh, anyway, Ghostbusters 2. Um, yeah, a lot of shit came out that year. That was a good year for movies, man. But You know that line has a name, right, Dave? What, what's his name? Leo. Leo. No, I did not know that. Leo the Lion. That's a true story. Oh, I did not know that. See, I'm learning shit already, it's man. us Leos are the lions. I don't know what that means, but this is an educational show. There you go. Um, but no, I always, I don't know. This, um, this one always just went under my radar. I just kind of always skip past it. We what major really sports guy really either. Growing no, up. no. But um, it was written and directed by David S. Ward that a few years later went on to go do another sports movie called The Program, which is my favorite sports Howdy. movie. Strangely, because like a lot of people love Major League and me not so much, but I love The Program and the Program's good. I feel like it's underrated. James Conn, The Program, 1993. Great movie. They got into a lot of shit. That's why. Yeah. And Sterling Charlie Sheen and then unknowns uh, Wesley Snipes and Rene Russo weren't were still relative on. I actually I think it's Rene Russo's first movie, wasn't it? Maybe. Uh, I think she was uh, modeling or something before this came out, and they picked her up. And um, Mr. Tom Berenger and I do believe uh, Sheen and Berenger I think just came off Platoon. Did Platoon she come out before Major League or after? Before? Yeah, before. Okay, she had done a couple. Renee Russo had done a, a TV uh, show and a, just a couple small bits before this. So wasn't this is her first? Uh, she was in Meanwhile in Santa Monica before this. So some some low rent. So this is her first big break then, pretty much. Yeah. And after this, we lethal weapon. 
Yep, it wasn't too long after. Uh, sure. 92. But, yeah, and this film had, what, $10, $11 million budget, made like 75 mil. Um, the sequels didn't, not, not so much. Um, I haven't seen any of the sequels, so I don't. Well, we watched about 20, 30 minutes of the, fir- the second one today. Yeah, it didn't seem too, I mean, it was nowhere near as good as the first one, but it didn't seem like that bad. I, I, I just wanted him to see the uh, transition of uh, Pedro Serrano. <laughs> I do like Pedro. I will say that. <laughs> I think he was my favorite character. Buddha Jobu. Jobu Buddha. Don't any trouble out of you two. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the sequels have had their moments, but they are they don't come even close to the original. No. no they don't hit the same. <laughs> And I, I know I'm jumping to the sequels. So oh, we'll go back to um, Focus on Major League in my, I think my first like full set down viewing of the movie. I don't think I sat and watched it all the way through before. I just seen parts of it. Um, so okay, let's see. The, um, the, uh, the 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 owner dies, and his like showgirl wife takes over the team, yep. and she she wants the team to lose because there's some sort of. I think like a clause in the contract or something because she's miserable in uh, the, it takes place in Cleveland and she's miserable in Cleveland, Ohio. And she wants to move to sunny Florida. And the only way she can do that is if the team fucking loses or not even not just loses, but finishes dead last. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, they don't have to finish dead last, but if they are dead last, then it's going to drop the attendance. And once the attendance drops under a certain amount, then they can break the lease with the city and she's able to move the team to Miami. So, <laughs> And if, 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 you know, being a guy that lived in Ohio for uh, many years, uh, if you, you can relate to, to not want to live in Cleveland. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. No, I love uh, Cleveland's all right. Cincinnati, on the other hand. <laughs> but no, yeah. People in the house. Good old Rachel Phelps, played by Margaret Witten. I just realized whenever I was going back and researching this uh, that she had passed away in 2016. I didn't even know that. Oh shit! Well, I know either. Yeah, That's she great. had uh, she had cancer and passed away. Hmm. Damn, fuck cancer, man. Fuck it. Yeah, that's a fuckery. Cleveland rocks. That's right. That's what they said. I mean, Pedro is my favorite character, but in a close second, it's got to be Bob Euchre, man. Fuck Bob Euchre. Oh, yeah. Fucking, fucking love that guy. Grew up on Mr. Belvedere. I remember him from wrestling. And, you know, he that that I think it was WrestleMania 4 when Andre put his hands around his neck, that iconic video of him. And um, with wrestling, like he's one of the outsiders or celebrities or whatever that they brought in that actually got it. Yeah. It like, seemed like he had fun with, but man, Bob Euchre, man, one, one of a kind. Oh, he kills it, man. He And the thing was, I think when Ward... Uh, had hired him for this gig. He didn't even realize that Euchre had been the broadcaster for the Milwaukee Brewers for 20 years. No, that's what he said, which is yeah. ironic. because That's where they filmed the movie at. Yep. Well, oh, that's right. Majority yeah. of it. Anyway, I'd say a good 90% of it. I mean, they just did the, um, the shots of the city for Ohio, I guess. Yeah. But yeah. Clean man, bro. I'll tell you, man. This is this is a great a great cast, and I feel like mm-hmm. whenever, whenever I'm going back and watching this and thinking about it, I'm like, man, everybody nails their part in this film. Yes, like, like yeah. I don't think that there was one character where you were just like, you know, fuck this person. Uh, just <laughs> every everybody, like you know, even like James Gammon as Lou Brown, fucking awesome as the the coach. I mean, all the players. Uh, Charles Cyphers, man, as uh, as as uh, Charlie, the GM. You know, fucking, we know him from like everything: Halloween, Sheriff Bracken, mm-hmm. freaking Fog, uh, Sold on Precinct Thirteen, uh, all that shit. The list goes on and on, man. He's a he's a legend. Now, he has a small part in this, but I mean, he he does a great job. Fucking everybody, I, I can't I can't put over this cast enough, man. Yeah, and Tom Berenger looks. I don't, he looks like a base, like he he looks like a the catcher. He looks like a baseball player. Like I, no. he just looks the part. I don't know how to explain it. He's just he he looks the part. Um, he was like, oh the oh, what was the name of the older pitcher? The, the Eddie Eddie Harris. 
played by He's, Chelsea uh, Ross. Uh, Colonel Oates from Bill and Ted, and I think yep. he was the senator in The Last Boy Scout, too. I, it, it took yeah. me a couple minutes. I was like, who the fuck is that? And then I, freaking, I recognize that guy. Yeah. He plays the, the part perfect, too. Mm -hmm. It's just being some fucking seasoned vet that knows he's pretty much on his way out. He's just trying to get one more, one more shot before he's completely out. And that's a good, that's a good, it's a good balance there where you have, you know, like Harris, you got Dorn, you got um, Taylor as the old, the, the old vets that are, you know, trying to get one more title run. And then you got the new guys with uh, and Serrano and Vaughn, you know, so it's a good balance of old and young. And, and it kind of shows the transitioning, especially in Major League Baseball, where, you know, you're coming in and you're learning the ropes and the old timers, you know, it's like like Harris, you know, he's showing Vaughn all the little, he's got the, like the Vaseline, the Vagisil and all this stuff <laughs> all over him, all of his little uh, tricks that, that wouldn't fly in the league uh, on how to <laughs> get a little bit more drop on his uh, uh, sinkers or whatever. So, uh, yeah, I, I think it's a cool dynamic. Yeah, he's like, what's that shit on your chest? It's Crisco, <laughs> Barbasol, and Vagisil. Anyone will have a two to three inch drop on your curveball. <laughs> rub, a little hollow, rub a little jalapeno under my nose. You put snot on the ball? <laughs> <laughs> you haven't had an arm like you, kid. Someday you will, too. Yeah. And I, I think this, this, this film is just like the, the perfect balance of of comedy and and sports and and heart you know because it's like it's one of those films it's it's you know full of comedy but it, it's still got that heart to it where it's an underdog story mm. of the team that that wasn't supposed to win that these guys were all just a bunch of of washed up nobodies or no names and you know the owner of the team is like oh these guys are shit so i'm gonna hire them and bring them in to make them lose but they're like, you know what? Fuck it. You know, we're going to win this thing. We don't mm -hmm. give a shit what you think. And, and that's what makes the story so great is that, you know, it's that, that underdog story. It's just like, you know, like so many times in sports, you know, th th those are the best films like Rudy and, and stuff like that, where you're rooting for the characters so much. And it's like, I went back and watched this. I hadn't seen it in a while. And I fucking love this film, man. Going back and watching it again. It's like, I, I, I've seen it so many times, but I was watching it the other night and it's like, I still get pumped up and, and like, like whenever they're, they're trying to win. And I'm like, I know they win the damn game, but <laughs> I'm still getting into it. So that's, what's so great about this film is it, you can still, you know, have that, that feeling that, that emotion and, and the heart that comes along with it and still be able to sit there and laugh your ass off too. I agree. Yeah, and like I, I, I did get pumped at. The, I know I'm jumping ahead again, but that um, the end when um, Wild Thing, oh, what's his name, Vaughn, Charlie Sheen, Vaughn, yeah, Ricky back. Vaughn, <laughs> and you know they got the music playing, the crowd's going nuts. He's coming out at the end. I did, yeah. I see oh, what man. you're saying. Get that, that, that is, you know, and they they started using that for you know the closers in Major League uh, after this film came out was you know anytime a closer would come out to finish the game, a lot of teams would would play that because it would get everybody so pumped up and it, it's like such a great shot too. It's like he comes from the bullpen and that music hits and the whole crowd is just on fire, man. And and that's you know, you know I, I know you're not a big sports guy, Dave, and but that's one of the the, the best things about sports, you know, especially being there live is experiencing that 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 emotion and that feeling with the crowd where everybody's just like fuck yeah let's fucking win this and and that's what makes it so special i think well, they used to play that same music for fucking mitch williams back in there he used to pitch for the phillies because he they used to call him a wild thing because he was fucking yeah. everywhere or teach him something yeah. before he kills somebody yeah, <laughs> this film definitely had an influence on a lot of people, you know, and it's like you can see that. And I think even back in uh, 2016, when the Indians had their run, um, they were they had Joe Boo statues and and uh, were, were bringing chickens in and everything like that. To, <laughs> yeah, to try to try to break the curse. Should have got him live chicken. 
So, you know, there's definitely the superstitions in, in sports, you know, that, that's a real thing. And a lot of people don't realize that, like how, how deep they go, you know, the guys that, that wear the same jock strap for like four years straight and don't wash it or, you know, it's, it, you know, all the crazy messed up superstitions that people have, you know, they're, they're a real deal. So let's give Joe Boo cigar and rum. <laughs> That's so good. That's so good, man. We all, oh, Joe Boo. We love Joe Boo. Fucking kills me. He is. We're we're, we're sitting there watching like a making of a major league, and Dave was sitting there, and he's like, are you fucking kidding me? I'm like, what? And he's like, you mean Serrano's the fucking Allstate guy? I'm like, yeah. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. I mean, it's been like one of the 35 years, whatever this movie came out, and he had the bald head and the goatee, and I just didn't. I didn't. I didn't realize that was him, and I was like, "Oh shit!" Yeah, he, he looks a lot younger in this. Yeah, it's fucking great. Like, no, I couldn't even picture anybody else playing that character oh, no. after he played. No, him. no, oh no, like, there's no way. He said he just kind of made up an accent. He's like, "They're like, what accent is that?" He's like, "I don't know." <laughs> what? <laughs> he's like, "I just pulled something out of the air." Yeah, he's my favorite. I could go back and watch all his scenes again. I, you did, and you never watched Twenty Four. He was great in uh, Twenty Four as uh, President, um, President Palmer. Palmer. Yeah. So great actor, been in a lot of stuff, and uh, you know this is just another one. Like we, we said, everybody just nails their parts, and and Serrano, man, came came here on a uh, based on religious freedom. What is his religion? Voodoo. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, all right, let's go. And, and, and it gets it right into it. Like, you know, the film starts out, you know, you, you set the, the table and you're in Cleveland and you go straight into it. And you learn that, you know, the the new owner is trying to get rid of the team and she's hiring all these bums. And then, you know, you you start to meet all these characters and it, it goes pretty quick. And uh, I like that the pacing where, you know, you kind of understand what's going on. Like she's told you she's the heel. And she told told the uh, GM and, and the audience that this is what she's planning to do. And now you got these guys, this ragtag bunch coming in, and it's like as soon as you you see all these guys, you know they're getting the 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 management is getting introduced to these characters about as the, at the same time we are. So it's like you got Serrano coming in with his trench coat and all this shit, and oh he's voodoo, and then you got like Hayes rolling up in a fucking beetle with. Uh, uh, like Rolls Royce grill. <laughs> <laughs> and then as, as soon as he pulls off, fucking Vaughn rolls up on the motor. I love that. He's like, he goes, who's it? Get it. Who's this fucking guy? <laughs> yeah, it's fucking guy. <laughs> yeah. It's my kind of team. Bro, it's it's fucking guy. Team. He's just, I, I just love whenever he's fucking calling everybody about coming out for spring training. And then he calls. Lou. Oh yeah. That's good. Too. He fucking calls Lou. And he's like, Hey, it's uh, Charlie for the Cle- for the Cleveland Indians. I'm find out being the uh, head coach this year. He's like, oh, I don't know. Let me think about it. And I'll call you back. I got a guy on the other line about some white walls. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, has no fucking care in the world. He'd rather fucking so manage good. a tire place. Yeah. <laughs> no. And Vaughn's in. If I can make it. <laughs> I wonder how they got a hold of him to begin with. Like, how do they not know he's in prison? Oh, I didn't think about that. <laughs> he's just on the phone. Like, ah, I just went with it. Can you be here by March 3rd? I don't know when they'll make it by then, but, uh, no. See, yeah, it's one of those things you just got to <laughs> go with, you know, of course they're not going to have the phone number for. <laughs> right. He's like, how'd you get there? Stealing a car. Where'd you California, play? California, penal league. Penal league. <laughs> Never heard of it. <laughs> and that's the other great thing about Hayes is, is he just shows up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like yeah. he wasn't in, like you just imagine a guy like showing up at spring training and being like, All right, I'm here. Let's go. <laughs> like, yeah. Just, he he just, had all this confidence. He was like he was just straight he, he was supposed to be there. So yep. he strolls right in there. And it, it, you know, uh yeah, I'm a lot like Hayes in the sense that I couldn't hit the ball worse shit. I couldn't catch the ball worse shit, but I could run because I mean I was I was a real skinny kid, so I could run. But yeah, hitting the ball was always a problem. You may run like Hayes, but you hit like shit. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I was just thinking about. Yeah, 
man. Play so I'm getting this play later. So many good quotes in this film, man. Just everything. Oh, man. So yeah, when good. They, they move his bed outside. He, he wakes up. He's like, shit, did I get cut already? And then just all of a sudden he, he starts sprinting in his fucking pajamas. Barefoot. <laughs> I, I, I like it. He's running past those two guys, right? And the one guy, I think the guy on uh, on the, the left side of the screen, he's just like, oh, this guy comes in front of him, like just blazing past him. Like, get him, get him a uniform. Veg head. <laughs> That's how you can tell, like, Doran and fucking Ed Harris are, like, the the two, like, oldest players on the team that have been there the longest because they're, like, just bullshitting with each other talking about golf. And then fucking Vaughn and them come walking in, then they start some shit. And then fucking Pedro comes in and fucking's like, ah, hat. Hats for bats. Keep bats warm. (laughs) Very good. (laughs) I forgot about that part. Yeah. He's like, thank you. And he's like, whoa, whoa. No problem. He's like, hold up there. And he's like. <laughs> He's not gonna fuck with him. But yeah, man, so good. Yeah, Pedro. That that would have been such a fun part to play too, Pedro. Just go all in for it. Well, they said that like uh whenever they were filming, like Tom Berenger was actually like trying to like be a catcher or whatever, and he kept saying his back was acting up, so then they were explaining to him like how being a catcher can really fuck you up and that's why they usually rotate catchers between games because right. after you catch you can't really catch a whole game without your back getting all jacked up and then they were saying how like charlie sheen i guess played baseball at some point in his life and actually was pitching yeah. so like it just came easy to him so like, they were like he passed off just like a regular major league pitcher mm-hmm. <clears throat> so they got lucky with that one so they could show the wide angles instead of just having the close-up bullshit shots yeah yeah hey uh Vaughn Sheen uh, used to be a baseball player. Now, uh, they said Snipes had never played any baseball at all. And they, that's like, uh, he couldn't throw the ball for shit. And um, that's, I, they said that's why you never see a shot of him in the film throwing the ball. It's just him running or batting or catching, you know. Well, he said the one, uh, the one shot they showed him catching that fucking uh, ball off the fence. That was actually him. Yeah. Like apparently he catch the ball good. He just couldn't do shit else with it. Yeah, he couldn't. He couldn't throw the ball. It's like you, you ever watch. Like uh, there's so many times where people will throw out the first pitch at a game, and they're not baseball players, and the fucking ball just goes flying. <laughs> like Fifty Cent, fucking threw out the first pitch the one time, and it went fucking way off. And uh, Conor McGregor, more recently, th- threw out a first pitch, and it was fucking way out there. <laughs> like, like it was. They were terrible throws. So it's like just because you're an athlete or athletic doesn't mean you're it's going to translate into baseball. Right. You're going to be able to throw a ball. Like so. I grew up playing baseball. So I mean, that's that was probably one of my favorite sports to play. Mm-hmm. I was the same way. You know, I was big into baseball until uh, the early '90s, and that's that's what pissed me off as, mm-hmm. as a fan. Because I was what I remember, uh, you know, I was young, but I was they were like, oh, these guys are going on strike because they, you know, Mm -hmm. they want more money and all this stuff. And I was like, what the fuck? Like you get to play baseball for a living. You get to do what you love for a living and, and make good money. Like, like, why would you go on strike? You know, I get it now. But, you know, it's, it's like it's a fucking war between the league and the players and all. But back then I was just like, oh, you guys are, seem like a bunch of greedy assholes. Right. So <laughs> it kind of turned turned me off to sports in general. You know, when you when you have, you know, all these guys that are wanting more money and, and uh, you get the money involved, it becomes a, a shit show. But the, the sports at, at, at their core are, are the things that, that people really love, I think. Yeah, I do remember the strike. I think maybe the second one might have came out around the time of the strike. Uh, I think about it. What was Probably. it like ninety three that happened? Somewhere around there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They've had a few strikes, but that was the first. That was one the first I one I remember. Yeah. Because yeah. that was big. I was big baseball fan, man. Fucking Ken Griffey Jr. Still my favorite all time. Yeah, I played when I was like a kid, but then I just I don't know for some reason I just gave it all up. I was always a big Frank Thomas fan. Yeah, 
the big hurt man he was he was my one of my second favorites because i remember back when i was a kid i always had the mariners hats and i had the white Sox hats. i, I always i like the white Sox because of frank thomas and always because um you would see like uh the, easy e. what was it ain't nothing well e, you'd see easy e and dr dre and those guys wearing the the white Sox hats too and the music videos so i was like hell yeah fucking white Sox. yeah my dad was a big o's fan so that made me a baltimore fan when i was a kid and then I, sure. like, I, when I got a little bit older, I found myself rooting for the Mets a lot just because they always lost. Mm-hmm. And you always root for that underdog. And now I hate the Mets because you always beat the fucking Phillies. Yeah. <laughs> like you didn't do any shit this damn. year. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe not this year, but usually, whenever it counts, they beat the Phillies. I didn't know. I didn't mind the Mets, especially in the late 80s. You know, we had Daryl Strawberry and Doc Gooden and, uh, you know, Hojo. I had a Daryl Strawberry Glove playing like Little League. That was the only I actually got to go down in the Mets dugout the one time. Um Sam Perlazzo, I don't know if you remember him or not. He's from our area up in Cumberland. Uh he was third base coach for the Mets. And he went on to be the manager for the Orioles and all that. So he's he's had a career. But back in the late eighties, he was third base coach for the Mets. And his dad, Nick Perlazzo, were good friends with my grandfather. They, you know, they always, my grandfather always ran poker games and stuff in town. And then Nick would always play. So they were good friends. And uh, I think it was a Pirates game, if I remember correctly. Nick was invited to throw out the first pitch. So uh, we got free tickets and went up to Pittsburgh and, and got to see the game. And then uh, Nick brought me down into the, the Mets dugout. Oh, and I got to see those guys. I got an autographed baseball. So I th- always thought that was yeah. really cool. I know, not being a huge not being a huge Mets fan, but just being a baseball fan in general, I, I, I was like, fucking mm-hmm. awesome. Because right. I was a Pirates fan at, at that time. Before Griffin came around, My, I, like you were said, Dave, you know, your dad was a O's fan, so it pretty much made you O's fan. Uh, my mom was a Pirates fan. And um, fucking I, I, Bonds, Benia, Van Slyke, you know, that was the crew back then. Uh, see, the Phillies are the, the shit back in. Darren Dalton, Lenny Dykstra. Good shit. John Crook. Not- oh, Cruxter from up our way, too. Kaiser, West Virginia. I actually can represent. And uh, a friend of mine is Leo Mazzoni's son. And we used mm-hmm. to always fucking hang out with him. And he used to cut John Crook's grass. <laughs> so we'd go up there. Yeah, Christmas night, yeah. right? So we used to go up there. Yeah. His dad used to get this whenever he'd come back from the road from the Atlanta and then he'd find out all this liquor was gone. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, man? We'd just be up there just fucking pounding liquor all weekend while his dad was on the road. Yep. No, yeah. <laughs> Good old days. <laughs> Nothing better than high school whenever we were fucking 15. Yeah. <laughs> getting getting shitty at our friends' houses. <laughs> I would always love this movie. Like, I can go back and watch it anytime. Like, even, like, not even really being a big sports person. I mean, I'm not saying I am. I'm just saying, like, in people like Dave's case or whatever that don't really follow sports too often, like, you can still watch it and enjoy it. And yeah. Because the comedy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the comedy is, is so good. You don't enjoy it. And, and it, it, no. it, it's, it's just hilarious. And that, that's, yeah. that's the fun part about it. There's more to it too. Like, and like, there's a lot of breakdown. Like, people are always wondering who the story's about. Like, is it about fucking Rick? Is it about fucking, uh, like, uh, Dorn? Is it about fucking Taylor? Like, you can never really tell because it just bounces back and forth between them so much. I think it's more about Jake Taylor, Tom Berenger's character. You know, that's, that's the one we see kind of, you know, more because you get the, the romantic right. influence with him and Rene Russo, you know, him and Lynn and then their history and all that. So you got, that's the love story that's kind of weaved into it, but you have uh, like all these other stories. Yeah. But I, I don't, cause I mean, the one, the one thing that does kind of like make me laugh though, is whenever he's trying to figure out where she lives and then fucking mm-hmm. <laughs> Willie Mays fucking, Kind of t- tells him like the stalker trick. He's just like, just follow her home from work. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think that's a little juvenile? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then he does, and he ends up going to like her fiance's fucking house, and he's having a party. Like, it's just so yeah. awkward. It's just funny, it's but it's so good. It's so good. 
because it's like you know you got the, the old couple there and the younger couple and the old couple was just like all oh, nice and everything oh hey i didn't even, <laughs> i didn't even know cleveland still had oh, a got uniforms and everything yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then you got the younger couple over here. You, you could tell that the guy's wife is like yeah. into him. You know, she, she's always, she's like, like very uh, forward with, her, you know, she, that she's like attracted to him. And uh, she, they're t- he's talking about uh, his salary. He's like, I, I make the league minimum. <laughs> and that's probably shit back then. Actually, I looked it up and um, they said that the league minimum at that year would have been like $68,000. And the average median household income was like 30 some thousand. So he was double uh, what most folks were making. So it wasn't bad for the time. Now, shit. I mean, shit, 70 grand to play a sport you love? Fuck it. Yeah. Now, what is it now? Oh, that's a, that's a different story. You got fucking o- people like Otani <laughs> raking in almost a billion dollars. Yeah. It's crazy how much these guys get now. But it is what it is. <laughs> Yep. And they always worry about their cap. Like in the second one, how like Dorn only has two more months to fucking make it on his budget, but he has four months of the season left. Like, what do you do? Right. <laughs> like, I'm sure that shit happens. And then uh, going back to like after spring training, uh, well, or during spring training, they're doing all the cuts and everybody's worried about being red tagged. Uh, that was a good one too, because you, you see like the dumb shit they're doing. Like every time, like they go to open their locker, like Serrano's got like this big snake. <laughs> <He's>, like, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, you see Wesley Snipes with this little <laughs> snake, little gardener like, snake, yeah, little gardener snake, and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> and it's like the day. It's like the final day of of training, and and uh, you know they're waiting to see if they get cut and fucking. <laughs> Snipes like opens his locker and jumps back and he doesn't want to look <laughs> and, and Vaughn just like staring at him like what the hell are you doing? <laughs> and he even like whenever he pops back around the corner, he just has like both his eyes closed and he opens one eye, and then he opens the other eye, and then he goes outside and starts fucking dancing. Yeah. <laughs> Don't celebrate in front of a guy who just died. <laughs> what if you're one of the deceased? <laughs> And then, fuck, and of course, Dorn's got to fuck with the rookie. Yeah, that's what I was just gonna say. They they had to put a red card in um, Vaughn's locker, and he goes and flips out. <laughs> you might think I'm shit now. But I'm gonna get he, gets, he, he runs in there. He flips the chair. <laughs> he, he starts screaming at Brown. Brown just sitting there like, okay. <laughs> and he fucking takes the ball and just throws it right into the locker. And he's like, I like that kind of. Uh, energy in a, a player. Only problem is I didn't cut you. Like, what? He's like, like somebody's be- having some fun with you, kid. He goes out and tackles Dorian. He's like, you better make it real clear to this rookie that I ain't afraid to take his sheet. Or uh, to something about like, I, I'm not going to take his shit. And he's like, oh, shut up, Dorn. <laughs> yeah. Fucking lose great in this movie. He so don't good, give a man. fuck. James Gann, man. He, and he passed away in 2010. He's been gone oh, for a wow. while, too. I remember him from this and then his small scene in uh, Natural Born Killers in the diner. You remember that? Oh, shit. Yeah, he was. Yep. Yeah. Remember whenever, whenever uh, was Woody Harrelson oh, sitting there? Yeah. And uh, his, the guy's buddy is, is dancing with Mallory. And uh, yeah, like, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Woody says uh, her name's Mallory, and and James Gammon's character says, "Whatever, I call it pussy." Man, I forgot all about that. Yeah, yeah. it's a very small part, but uh, and he, I don't think he even got credited for it in in the film. But uh, those are the, the these are the two main things that I remember Gammon from. But he was he's fucking awesome in this. Like, yeah, definitely looks the part. Definitely. <laughs> Takes <laughs> Dorn, you know, he, he tells Dorn, you know, of course, first he tells Hayes that, you know, if he pops any more up that he has to do 40 push ups. And then you got Dorn out there who doesn't want to get hit by the ball or anything. He's, he's just kind of like, <laughs> and he just, this is what's with this OLA bullshit? <laughs> he, comes, he comes running up with a contract. He's like, see, I can't do this, this, and this. And then he, he's just like, just looking at him. 
throws it on the ground calisthenics and pisses on it. Yeah, that's what it was. And then he pisses on it and just walks away. <laughs> like, wow. I like how <laughs> Dorian, like, okay, so he unzips his pants and starts pissing on it. And Dorian <laughs> looks at him and looks down. <laughs> yeah, why do you keep looking down? Yeah. <laughs> like, I, like, I'm going to watch you piss on my contract. <laughs> We're both just staring at the ground. What the fuck? With the, with the shortest piss ever. Serrano knock cranking him out. He's like, Oh, this guy hits a ton. Why didn't anybody else pick it up on him? Throw like, some oh, sliders. Change up. <laughs> <laughs> Misses. He's like, Oh. <laughs> can't hit it. I can't hit the uh change ups and the sliders and the curveballs. The whole fucking time he's just doing like little ceremonies in his locker to wake up the bats. That way he can actually hit it. <laughs> and then by the I, end, it's like Fuck you, Joe Boo. <laughs> I do it myself. <laughs> I, I like when he's sitting there and uh, uh, he, he's arguing back and forth with Harris. And, and Harris, like, I think it was the first game of the season or whatever. And Harris wanted to do a prayer. <laughs> he's like, oh, are, are we going to pray? And he's like, uh, you go ahead. He's like, all right. And it's like, everybody bow their heads. And uh <laughs> Serrano takes the cigar and puts it in the, like, the gunpowder that's around the Joe Boo, and it's like, poof, and it explodes. And he's like, Jesus Christ, Serrano. <laughs> he's like, what? Must wake up bats. He's like, oh, <laughs> all right. And then he starts praying. And then all of a sudden, the, the smoke goes up and the <laughs> sprinklers go off. <laughs> it's like, our Lord and so Savior, many good Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> that shit's so fucking funny. And that dynamic, you know, goes through the film. Like later on, whenever uh, he's get, he's getting ready to head out to the when Harris is getting ready to ha- head out to the field, and nobody else is around, so he then he grabs the little shot glass from Joe Boo and, and takes a drink, and then he uh, he goes out and <laughs> on the field and he's like, "Hey, Joe Boo needs a refill." And then like at that point, somebody's like batting and they the bat slips out of their hand. It's like, "Watch out!" And it hits him in the back of the head. <laughs> it's very bad. Stealing rum is very bad. Yeah, don't steal Joe Boo's rum. I, what does he say? It's like, I like Jesus, but he cannot hit a curveball. Uh, Jesus, I like him very much. <laughs> but he no help hit a curveball. <laughs> you saying Jesus Christ can't hit You're a trying curveball. to say Jesus Christ can't hit a curveball? <laughs> Man, that would be so much fun. Just so. And then later on, when, when they're on the airplane, like whenever whenever she uh, gives him the shitty airplane, <laughs> and it, like, it, they're like in the middle of a storm and lights going out and everything, you see Serrano finally <laughs> do this. He's like, he's like, oh, now you want to come around. <laughs> I just like whenever they're like passing around like all those fucking old ass magazines we used to get in like elementary school and shit. And he's like, yeah. here, I got one up your alley, Vaughn. Crime and punishment. <laughs> and then fucking. <laughs> Hayes is like, is that a detective yeah. story? Switchboard. All right. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, as they start winning, the new owner starts to sabotage them. Like she yeah. gives them the shitty airplane. She cuts off their hot water, I think, and like a couple other things. Yeah. A lot of the stuff doesn't get fixed in the, the clubhouse. And, you know, just making it harder on life in general. They get She ends up giving them the shitty bus and everything like that. So you, whenever you, they're traveling, they're all beat up and worn down and, you know, just doing anything she can to try to make these guys lose. But they're not going to give up, man. Nope. You guys and your stuck. bunch of pansies in here. <laughs> <laughs> they're all behind her, like, fucking making gestures. That shit cracks me up, too. Whenever you finally fucking too old gets, and- uh, the cardboard cutout. <laughs> Hmm. They have to win so many games to Every make the time. fucking play uh, to, to get what first place to win the pennant. That's what I was telling Dave too. I was like, a lot Every- of movies like it's like all about winning the series and this, that, and the other thing. Like this was just all about winning the pennant and being in first place. No, I'm pretty sure this might be the only baseball movie that they actually do that. Like most of it is like playoffs or World Series or whatever. Yeah, but like at the it's always always the big right. game. Yeah, the big game. And like at the, the beginning of the movie, we see the, the the horrible past of the Cleveland team. Like how what was it thirty years at that point? More than that before they ever won anything. Yeah, more than that. More than that. Last time the last time they won was uh, nineteen forty eight, and that's still a thing. 
They haven't won the World Series. The closest they came was 2016. And hell, that's a fucking series because you got the Indians who haven't won in, in so long. And then you got the Cubs had, had, hadn't had won. Curse. Yeah. Well, a little bit of a curse. You know, it, it was, you know, that. And then you got the Red Sox who finally broke the curse. You know, that's another, you know, you think about underdog stories and all that. It's, that's probably one of the biggest underdog stories was the 2004 Red Sox coming back down the, the World Series. They're down three games, and you know I don't know if you're familiar, Dave, but in, in the World Series, it's a seven game uh, playoff. So you got to win four games to win the World Series. So they're down three games already. That means they got to win the last four games, which nobody had ever done in in Major League Baseball history. And they end up coming back and, and winning the whole thing, breaking the curse. So you know that that's probably one of the biggest comeback stories in, in baseball of all time. You know, shit. See, I love this. This is such a good show. Input, input, input. How you doing? I'm alright. Need more input. But yeah, you know, it was 2016 is the closest they came, and now, now, now they're not even the Indians anymore. You can't even call the Indians. Cleveland's the Guardians, which I yeah. fucking hate. I hate that name. That's a bad name. And yeah. a bad logo. Like, yeah. Like I, I get it. I understand getting rid of the Indians, get rid of Chief Wahoo and all that. You know, I understand the history there with Native oh. Americans and everything. And um, but you know, why are you going to go with the guard? I mean, I, the Guardians. Are, you know, the statues that you see at the beginning or whatever of the film. That's they're called the Guardians, and that's why the team ended up being called the Guardians after 2022. I don't like it. I, I think I would have rather liked to, them to be the Cleveland Rockers. I think you know because you got the ties of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I think Cleveland Rockers. Would have been a better name. Oh, here we go. Here's some more baseball talk coming at you. Baseball. 86 Mets had the best comeback. They were down in the last three strikes. Oh, so it was a full game to play. That was that was a good one too. But I mean, like, but I mean, with, with the Red Sox, man, you know, especially the whole story, you know, uh, of them breaking the curse, and you know, it being against New York. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I feel like it's it's probably one of the best stories because, you know, like I said, you, nobody had ever come back from a, a 3-0 deficit at the, at the series. So, you know, there, there's a whole lot of other ones. We if, There's so many different games and it's so many different teams and everything. You could go back and look at, at some of the greatest stuff in baseball. But that one definitely stands out. So. You need your, your sports all, Mac. <laughs> so you go back in time, put some money on the Cubbies. Oh yeah, Race, what'd you sports, say? Almanac. I almost went to that one. I, that was one World Series that I wish I would have gone to because I was like, you know, either way, you know, because the game down to Game Seven in 2016, and uh, I think they were in Cleveland when the when the Cubs won. But I was like, either way, you know, you're going to witness history here if Chicago wins or Cleveland wins, and right. uh, I, that would have definitely been a great one to see. In person, so wow, throw down some baseball knowledge, some baseball history. I like it. I'm having a good time. Hell yeah! Oh, you'll be fine. I don't feel fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, what, what? What happened? I was going to say, even in this one, like the fucking Yankees are their big rival. <clears throat> Which tend to be everybody's <laughs> fucking rock. <laughs> it's always. What's what's he say about Haywood? Uh, <laughs> he gets up there and he's like, uh, Haywood, uh, isn't he a convicted felon or something? Like that? <laughs> and uh, like, know, oh, you guys like, no, like no, I don't think so. Oh, he should be. <laughs> <laughs> and he's telling and about what, the guy's mustache. Looks yeah. like he's got a party favor up his nose. <laughs> <laughs> or later on, uh, whenever they bring out the Duke. And he's talking about like, oh, <laughs> this guy uh, even threw his, his, his at his kid and his son's uh, little league father son game. <laughs> and that and that's what's cool in this film is like you know, it, there's so much comedy throughout the film, but then once it gets towards the end, the climax, you know, they, it gets a little bit more serious. And I like that because it's like you still have a little bit of comedy, but it, it's there's so much focus on them being serious and them winning the big game. So it's like, you know, 
you have all these different rivalries throughout, like, you know, we said with Harris and Serrano, where they're kind of back and forth at each other because of their religious differences or whatever. And, you know, they finally, you see the team come together. And, and that's what makes it so inspiring because it's like, you know, you, you see Harris out in the bullpen warming up and he's got the Joe Boo statue right next to him. And then it's like you have the situation where, uh, you know, fucking Dorn's wife sees him mm-hmm. on TV yeah. Uh, with with another woman, so she comes up with the idea that she's going to sleep with Ricky Vaughn to kind of get back at him. <sighs> what a bitch! Yeah, there was, there was a lot of tension. <laughs> I, did, at, I didn't know who end. she was. Yeah, I swear there was oh, a lot, man. a lot of tension in, in the end there. So shitty, like because you know they're getting ready to go into this fucking game. Yeah, and and she's like, oh, you know, let me tell you, I want to tell you something. And it's like, why would you tell your husband right before this big game? that you slept with one of his teammates. Bitch. Right. Yeah, that's, like, I get it. I get it. He fucked you over, but just wait a little bit. <laughs> and, but it ended up, it ended up being, uh, being the thing that kind of put it over because, uh, you know, once, you know, she walks out and Jake sees her and he walks over and looks at Ricky. He's like, I didn't know. I swear to God, you know, and then Dorn finds out and, and he, and, like, Dorn's on the warpath kind of looking for him there before the game. And he thinks that Dorn's just going to fucking tear him apart whenever he fucking gets to him. So then when they finally call him out and, and they bring out Vaughn and he's on the mound warming up. And then fucking Dorn comes over and fucking it's like, oh, shit, here we go. And you th- you're like, this is going to be the thing that fucks him over. But he, he comes over and he takes the ball and he's like, strike this motherfucker out. <laughs> mm-hmm. there's, there's so many fucking scenes that just get you pumped up. It's like one of those things where you like. This guy's gonna fuck a dick again, but it's like nope, like like it, it like all the petty bullshit that they they went through throughout the whole film, throughout the whole season, has has been just pushed away f- in order for them to be a team and to win this. Like like all the other shit, moment. yeah, none of the, none of this shit matters. Like you slept with my life, you know I'm fucking pissed, but you know what? Fucking strike this motherfucker out. We'll settle this and shit what, later. Yeah, and they did. Or, yeah. Literally, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> he's there. They like hug each other, and he's like, "Bam!" <laughs> and knocks him down. And then but, that uh, was it. It was, I guess, the look, was... the look on Charlie Sheen's face always <laughs> cracked me up too, because he gets punched in the face. Then he gets up, and Dorn just grabs him and starts hugging him again, and he yeah. has this look on his face, like, "What the fuck just happened?" <laughs> yeah. And then he starts smiling again and gives him a hug. Squashed. <laughs> Done. We won. But yeah, I like I like strike this motherfucker out, and um, the other one that's great. Whenever the team discovers that. Uh, the owner is against them and that they're all going to be either cut or released or whatever at the end of the season. Uh, and they're all kind of sitting there real quiet or whatever. And, and uh, Jake Taylor's character says one thing left to do win the whole fucking thing, you know? Yes. And that, you know, cause, <laughs> cause, uh, yeah, because because Lou was talking to uh, Charlie and and he was like, oh, you know, he's like, we got a really good team. I got a couple all, all stars out there potentially, and he's like, we just need you know something to bring it together. And it was that thing, you know, you know, Charlie kind of spilled the beans on what uh, Margaret was getting ready to do or what was trying to do, and uh, that's what you know really is like. Oh, you know, we're gonna show these motherfuckers what's up. Right. So fucking good. Wild thing. Okay, 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 okay. And then you even see the transition whenever <laughs> they find out, like, they call him Wild Thing because he just throws fucking crazy nonsense. And then he goes into the fucking office with Lou the one day and he sees him squint trying to read some shit. And then he's like, Let's go get your eyes checked out. And he has these fucking goofy ass glasses on, and fucking Harris is like, They look good. I had a pair just like them. <laughs> I think I'm gonna find something that's a little more me after the after the game. Or once they get to Cleveland and they go out to remember they get to Cleveland and they go out to dinner. It's it's uh, uh there you go. The Ricky Vaughn glasses. Like they glasses they go out to di- real lenses in these bitches and I'm wearing them. <laughs> they go out to dinner. Uh, Hayes Vaughn and uh, Taylor, and they're sitting at that fancy restaurant. And <laughs> you see, you see Vaughn with the the sleeves ripped off the jacket, and he's got just a tie around him <laughs> with his like chest hanging out and everything. It's house like, rules. 
I feel like a banker. <laughs> I feel like a bank. I feel like a banker in this. Ooh, Ooh, a good okay. Question. Do you like Wesley Snipes as a ball player in the movie or his role <laughs> as a ball player in the fan? I actually forgot about that movie. Mm. I don't know. That's a tough mm. one for me. I love the fan. That's a good movie. That's a good one. I uh I would say this one. I don't know. It's two different yeah, two characters, different you know. Yeah. yeah. Cause there's so many good, good things with, you know, Hayes, you know, just <laughs> like him him trying to steal the bases and everything like that. And like uh like I think it was like during spring training or whatever they were playing a game and uh he runs and he tries to steal second and he slides and he's he's a foot or two out <laughs> and and the guy's like, Come on, come on. He's like <laughs> so so many good things uh, I, would, I like this this character better the willie mays hayes character better than uh his, his character in the fan well even in the beginning whenever he leads off of first and uh the guy's like you planning on going somewhere he's like yeah i plan on getting a double out of this he's like i bought 100 pairs of these i was just gonna say that yeah i was just gonna <laughs> for say every that. base i'm gonna steal and he's like you're gonna look real funny stealing a base with your shoe untied <laughs> He fucking yeah. looks down and gets thrown out. Yeah. And like Picks the thing with the gloves, you know, he said he bought well like a hundred like, pairs. Yeah, hundred pair or whatever it was. And then every then every once in a while it cuts back and you see him nailing another pair <laughs> to the wall, and then there's more, and then there's more. And it's like Yeah. Yeah. So I say I say Hayes. But they're two completely different people. Yeah, the fan was definitely a more serious movie. But it was a fucking good movie. Yeah. There's a couple. Uh, they, you were talking about uh, Platoon earlier, and with uh, Berenger and, and Sheen, you know, their teammates in this and in Platoon, they were kind of uh, enemies. With well, I think the one interview I saw with Charlie Sheen, he was saying like he read the script for this, and he's like, "I want to do it." And then he said he called Tom Berenger and was like, "Hey, you doing this?" And he's like, "Yep." And he's like, "All right, let's do it then." And he's like, "It was just weird doing a movie where they're actually teammates and not kind of like hating each other." And he's like, because we just literally yeah. got back from the Philippines like six months before we read the script. <laughs> so he's like, we were still fresh. So like he was, he said it was kind of just nice being able to actually sit down to him and talk to him as like a, a friendly person instead of just like someone that he has to re, like, uh, report orders to or whatever. <laughs> I think Ward, you know, talking about you know Cleveland never. I haven't winning since 1948. I think Ward, whenever he said he, he wanted to do this film, the whole idea was he was going to have Cleveland win because he never <laughs> thought he'd see them win in real life. The only way so, it's going to happen. So. Yeah. So, um, the one scene in this movie too that cracked me up might be <laughs> shit. Huh? No. Go ahead. No, I was going to say the one scene that cracks me up is whenever I think me and you talked about it the other day. Whenever fucking he steal he takes the bullpen car. Mm. And follows his fucking girl to her house. Mm -hmm. I'm like, he would never make it out of the fucking stadium for one, <laughs> especially after all the fucking security and bullshit we saw this past, like the last <laughs> week or whatever. Like, there's no way they would let that fucking thing go on the road, period. Just go. Uh, it was oh, I mean, that's funny. Like, I, I, I just want to be that guy that's driving down a <laughs> random street in Cleveland and see a fucking bullpen car come flying by me. Yeah, it's just a, a golf cart. It's just a golf cart with a giant baseball hat on it. <laughs> it, it right, right, but still, like, that shit, you can't drive that shit on the street. It's just funny, though. I'm just like, I need a car, but mine's on the other side of the stadium. Just take the bullpen car. It's like, all right. <laughs> like, who would even suggest that? That's just fucking crazy. I gotta yeah, go stop this shit. <laughs> well, I don't think. He just said he needed a car. He didn't say what it was for. Right. <laughs> but it's just funny. It would have been even funnier, though, had he said that. <laughs> <laughs> he just turned into an accomplice real quick. <laughs> if she ends up missing, we're going to have problems. <laughs> and she does great, too, in that movie, I thought. Hey, you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those ones, you know, whenever I'm watching a comedy, whenever they get too much in love story it kind of turns me off you know but this one they don't really they, it's like they touch on it but they don't delve into it to where it distracts you right from what's going on you know it's it's just kind of like you said the second one she's only in a few minutes yeah no, just I like you said watch it, it long enough. The, the focus is on Jake Taylor more so than anybody and it's just like okay you know this you know I, I love how uh 
he is like once they get to Cleveland, he goes into the empty stadium and he's standing there because he knows this is like his and uh he's just kind of you know imagining you know the, the stadium being filled it's the bottom of the ninth two outs and he's at, at the plate and you know he calls his shot and and then boom hits it out of, out of the park and he runs the bases and they're there it's like oh <laughs> oh that was that was a good was one that a slide? I really got a hold of that one but then <laughs> but then it comes full circle later on whenever it really is the bottom of the ninth and there's two outs and you got Hayes on and uh, it's such a good play because you don't know what's going to happen, but they've already worked out the play where, where, you know, haste and Taylor decides, okay, you know, I'm going to call my shot. And if, if anybody, you know, anything about baseball, you know, when you call your shot, you're, you're basically saying, I'm going to hit a home run right there. That's where I'm going to hit it. And, you know, like they, I think you even said in the film, nobody had done it since Babe Ruth back in the day. Cause you don't do that. You know, it's, it's, it's showboating kind of a thing. And, but, you know, Taylor is just like, you know, fucking with the Yankees and fucking with the Duke, like saying, okay, I'm going to fucking hit a home run right now. And this is where it's going. So the, the, the Duke's like, all right, motherfucker, I'm going to give it to you. And uh, he switches it up and, and he ends up button. And that's what makes it so great is because you think some, you know, it's like, oh, you know, in most films, you know, the climax is the guy hits the home run, wins the game. But no, he, they switch it up on you. He bunts and, uh, runs it out and uh, Hayes ends up getting all the way home and, and making it and winning the game. So I, I think that's a, a cool little thing because, you know, like we said earlier, it's like, you know, he was kind of fantasizing about that moment and you're thinking, Oh, here it comes. He's going to hit the home run and they switch it up on you and uh, he bunts, but he, he still wins the game for him. And uh, you know, it, it's just a good way to wrap it up. And that whole scene too is like real emotional. Cause you can tell he's running his fucking heart out. Yeah. Like he knows he has to get there or else this fucking whole dream's done. Mm-hmm. Like, and it, and shows, his, it shows in his reaction. Yeah, because, you know, it, the whole idea is his knees are just complete shit, you know, at, at this point in his career. So, you know, him running it out like that, uh, that would put a toll on you. So, you know, yeah. it was one of those ones where it's like you have to get there. And then Hayes has to be able to get all the way from second to home and make it. So, yeah. It's it's a big play. It's a tough play, but uh, I I just like how it all played out. You know, very cool. Yes, they say he has bad knees about ten times in the movie. You can uh, tell it like, because you can always yeah. tell he's he's favoring the right one, and that's the one he falls on whenever he yeah. he reaches cross first plate. Yeah, like it's, it's just fucking rough. Like I felt that in my knees because my knees fucking suck. And like I think it was that part on the bus. Or he just looks miserable and he's got ice Looking on both his knees. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, you feel it. Especially as a, as a catcher, because, you know, you're crouched mm-hmm. down the whole time and you got to be able to come off, off the ground and, and make plays and everything like that. So it takes a toll on you. You know, that's why I was still surprised when Pudge was still playing a few years back whenever they were in the fucking World Series and shit. Yeah. Old Pudge like, Rodriguez. Fucking catchers don't, they, don't, they only have about half the, the life as most players do. Because your knees just get fucked. I, I think, uh, like, goddamn. Like, I've caught a few games back in my day, and that's just rough. Yeah, I think Ward had said that, uh, uh, he based it off Carlton Fisk. Okay. So I can see that. Another the Red Sox. Yeah. He, he was, he was, was a beast Red, too. Red Sox and Ward. Then he get into a play with Nolan Ryan. So I think uh, the Taylor character. I think so. <laughs> Remember when when uh, Roman, uh when Randy Johnson hit that fucking <laughs> bird? Did you ever see that video? Yeah, that's a good one. Dave, you ever have you uh, ever seen that, Dave? I'll have to show you. Oh man, I got I got to pull that up. Well, that kind of reminds me too. Movie. Whenever Serrano hits the bird in the second one, and he's all Buddha and peace, love and happiness yeah. stuff, and he was running out. Oh no, Serrano kill a living thing. He's like, you're out, Gandhi. <laughs> he just fucking puts the ball in his hand. See, I don't even know how the hell I could pull this video up since they fucking changed all this shit on me. Hit that message first. Huh? Hit that message first. Let's see what this says. Uh, doesn't that make you appreciate the Kirk Kirk Gibson? He had to hit it. His knees were shot. No way he beats out an infield single. Yeah. 
I was just watching that the other day too. Whenever I remember that when I was, when I was a kid, Kirk Gibson hit that home run, and it's just like, you know, that was that was one of those those uh, scenes that they just kind of they played back, and it, you know, it, it just just etched in your your brain forever. You know, just seeing those type of uh, things happening. Are you trying to bring up the bird video? Who what are you doing, Chad? No, oh, okay. I'm doing, no. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I thought you said you're trying to bring something up. No, I was um, saying I don't know how. Yeah, I don't. You can try to, to bring it up, on this thing. but I don't know what's going to happen if you try. They updated our restream, so we'll have to fucking get used to working all over again. Um, there you go. It's only a 26 second clip, so I don't think we'll get hit with a copyright. But you got to see this, Dave. Fucking Randy Johnson pitching. Boom! Oh, shit! <laughs> Uh, here's a, a slow mo. Boom! Oh wow! Bird it's Hits it. and that's and, and that's not edited. That's the real life shit. <laughs> you know, a lot of people are like, "Oh, that's fake." Like, nope, he had a fucking bird, killed it. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Randy Johnson was like, he he was the shit back in the day. No oh, hell yeah, he's like average in like ninety seven. God damn. <clears throat> Love Randy Johnson. Griffin. Fucking beast. Mariners. Great team. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Taylor was based off Carlton Fisk, I think he said. Um, Willie Mays Hayes was based off Ricky Henderson, which I, I totally see. Yeah. And uh, Serrano, Serrano, Serrano was based off of uh, Orlando Cepeda and Wade Boggs. Because they would uh, eat, <laughs> they had a superstition where they would eat chicken before each game. Oh my god! Right. What always got me was he called his shot. Then the next pitch was Adam. Why didn't Hayes take off from second? Oh, he would have got thrown off, thrown out too quick on that one. No, that's why he swings at anything whenever he knows he's going to steal. Because if you swing, the catcher has more of a chance of fucking up the throw. Well. Well, Hayes is, or Hayes is on second, and he calls the shot. And, and like we said, it pisses off the Duke, so the Duke throws at him. And I, I think the if the Duke hadn't thrown at him, it, it still would have been the same play where he's going for the bunt. Right. So. Yeah, because he, like, hand-signaled that fucking play to four different people, pretty much. Yeah, because yeah, Hayes is on first at, at the beginning. He's got to swing away. In order right. for Hayes to be able to steal second, right. So once he's on second, he realizes, "Hey, you know, I got an idea." So let's fox with him. That's a hell of an idea. <laughs> Send it in. How's your wife and my kids? <laughs> <laughs> they said like all that dude's fucking lines were all fucking like just pretty much ad libbed. Yeah, I was like, that's pretty good. Because I, I, I said that all the time back in the day. So many good quotes in this film. Look at this fucking guy. <laughs> Early on, whenever Hayes makes that, that basket catch, and he's coming in, and he's like, nice catch, <laughs> Hayes. Never fucking do it again. <laughs> <laughs> That's like whenever in the second one, whenever he fucking is cranking out home runs, and fucking Rube's like, He's got a hell. Of, what the fuck he say? He's like, uh, "I was a hell of a hit." He's like, "Yeah, all the guys gonna be back in groceries in a couple weeks." <laughs> <laughs> That's just so funny. Oh, let's see. Ricky Vaughn character wasn't based off Philly pitcher Mitch Williams, aka Wild Thing. Was not. Wild thing. God, I'm never going to get that song out of my head now. Oh, that's fuckery. Hmm. And that wasn't even the original version by the Trogs. It was what? Some group called X. Yeah. And then they also had fucking Randy Newman in there and some Bill Medley. Soundtrack's pretty dope. Like, I ain't going to lie. Like, there's like a lot of shit that I really wouldn't listen to, but the songs that are in the movie, I listen to. And. You just can't get them out. And every time I just fucking listen to any of them, it's uh, was that most of all you song? Like, I have that shit on my playlist, and every time I listen to it, I just think of the fucking major league. 
so the Ricky Vaughn character was based off Ryan Duren, who was mm. a relief relief pitcher back in. Uh, he was pretty crazy too. The twenties, or no? Uh, he played for the Orioles in the fifties. Yeah, I know he's Ryan, in my Cooper's. He's in my Cooper's down book. Ryan Duren. Ryan Sandberg was named after Ryan Duren. Oh shit! So big influence, in baseball. Before my time. Yeah. I still have my Cooperstown book I got whenever I was fucking like eight, nine years old. My grandfather got it for me. Dude, man. Yeah. If you ever get a chance, you know, regardless of uh, being a sports fan or not, if you get the chance to go to Cooperstown and check that out, I mean, so much history there. Definitely. Definitely got to go and see that. I went up. You know, speaking of, of Cooperstown and Griffey, whenever, the only time I've been to Cooperstown was when Griffey got in, inducted, and uh, he got inducted with Mike Piazza at the same time. Mm. So that was pretty cool. What year was that? What year was that? That was like six or seven years ago. Huh. Damn, really? It's just that long ago? Yeah, it's been a while. Uh, year was that 2016 so yeah oh, that's cool you got to go to that um, though. that's what i said i was like if i'm going to any hall to be griffey i thought about going mm -hmm. up for g for jeter you know jeter is you know one of the the top guys of our time you know the last few generations uh so that would have been cool to see too but i was like i, I have to see griffey go in the hall yeah, yeah that's awesome that's like me getting to go to Bret Hart's Hall of Fame induction. Mm -hmm. That'd be the same thing. Oh yeah, the same feeling. Like you got to be there. Yeah. Like I grew up with this fucking guy. It's like you got to be there to see it. It's got to come full circle like that. That's cool. I did not know that, Mike. No. I remember seeing Griffey stuff in your room, though. I do remember that. Oh yeah. Griffey was dope. The kid. Him and Jose Canseco were the, the double clobbers. Whenever the All Star game down here at uh in, in Baltimore, when fucking Griffey headed off the fucking warehouse, that was pretty fucking sweet. They got they got a, a little plaque too where the ball hit off the warehouse. Oh, nice. Yeah, I always liked like the uh, Camden Yards. Their stadium is nice. Camden and uh, PNC out in Pittsburgh. Those are the top two rated uh, ballparks in the league by by fans. Whenever they had the All Star game out in Pittsburgh, whenever I lived up there, and we went out there just watching the balls fall in the fucking river. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that was pretty fun. Yeah. So we went during the home run derby, so like it was just balls flying out of the stadium <laughs> into the river. That's awesome. Balls flying. <laughs> People on kayaks out there trying to catch the balls and shit. <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah, they're just uh, sitting out there in kayaks trying to catch them. So that was pretty fucking cool. Um, and then last week, yeah. I don't know. was underwater. But, uh, you know, I I, uh, I love this film. I, I can't say enough good things about it. It's one of those ones that is up there with all the other uh, best sports films. You know, any given Sunday, uh, fucking – Field of Dreams, uh, list, a huge list, but it, it's definitely you know one Varsity of the best blues. in my opinion. Varsity Blues, <laughs> I don't know about that. Well, it's like Mike said, you know, this, this tin cup. I mean, is for casual viewers too. You don't have to be a baseball fan no. to enjoy this one, and I think maybe that's why this one stands out a little. More. And it looks good. It look it looks like a real ball team and everything like that like you said the the players looked the part the the settings everything looks legitimate as opposed to you know you're, you're watching something like fucking angels in the outfield or something you know <laughs> whatever i know it's a kids movie whatever but um there's so many other films where it just doesn't look have the feel to it like it, it really feels like they're documenting a, a mm. season of that's baseball. what he said he said he wanted some like real life like locker room stuff going on in there so you can tell like how the players are close but at the same time they still give each other shit was it better than the water boy 
definitely better than the water bar, but uh, I'll drink some <laughs> H2O to that. High quality, high quality H2O here. Some water. Well, there you go. Final thoughts, gentlemen, on um, Major League. I mean, if you want to get into fucking the baseball season, definitely give it a watch. Like, I watch it almost every year, even though I don't even watch baseball until after All-Star break because there's just too many fucking games to even really care about. But, And that's, that's another thing I, I was going to mention was that, you know, they condense – a whole season into hour what? How long is this film? An hour and forty. Yeah. So they condense a whole season, and you get that that emotion from start to finish, where you're going from spring, and you know you can see that range of emotion. Where if you're you know a, a fan, and you've got a seven month stretch of a season, where you're watching 160 some games, it it doesn't play out the same. So you get to right. have that feeling of. All right, these guys, you know, they they always show the the two Asian guys that are working on the field. Oh, like, yeah, <laughs> they're they're shitty. They're still <laughs> shitty. <laughs> That's why I like the beginning of it. Whenever they're like, "Who the fuck are these guys?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that dude too. Yeah, because you know the this all the the real diehard fans, <laughs> diehard night, <laughs> free admission for anybody that was is still alive. <laughs> the last time, <laughs> it's like. Oh, <laughs> But yeah, you get you get that emotion of a whole season, especially with the underdog story condensed into that hour and forty two minutes or whatever, and you it it kind of transition or comes through a lot better. I don't know what the fuck I'm trying to say, but um, it's good writing. Yeah, like there there it doesn't slow down at any point. Everything flows smoothly, and like I said, everybody that is in this film nails their character perfectly. I think. So, you know, it, it's that combination of everything that, that makes it so good. And, you know, I, I like I said, I hadn't watched it in a while and I, I'm kind of kicking myself. You know, I think from now on, right before the, the beginning of each baseball season, I'm going to go back and watch this. It's going to be my fucking thing to get me hyped for the like season. Hype movie. For sure. That'd be a good you tradition. Know, fucking rookie of the year. I mean, <laughs> Because, you know, I, I'd been turned off the baseball for so long, and now, you know, the last few years I've been getting back into it. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. You know, I, I've been try- I, I set a goal uh, last year to where I was going to go to all of 30 of the Major League Baseball stadiums because I wanted to see every single stadium and, and see every single team play. And I've gone through 20 so far. So I'm, I'm trying to finish it up this year, the last 10, and uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, that's the plan, you know. Oh, yeah, man. Because it's it's like you know, for, especially with the older stadiums. You know, if you ever go up to Fenway or uh, out to uh, Wrigley, um, last year whenever I went to um, the Oakland Oakland Coliseum, like everybody shits on the athletics and how run down Oakland is, and, and how they uh, they want that. I went out there, I had a blast because I love those older stadiums. You know, you get the the, the history is there, and, and it just. Has has a different feel. For, they, have a per- uh, they, have, they have their own personality, the older stadiums. For real. And um, I remember back whenever the original Yankee Stadium was getting ready to close, and I was like, fuck, man, I, I, you know, I have to go there at least once. And it was the last week that Yankee Stadium was going to be open. I actually planned it to where they were playing the White Sox, and at the time, Griffey was with the White Sox. So I was like, I'm going to go out and see Griffey play at the original Yankee Stadium. And uh, and get where they closed down, and it, it was fucking awesome. You know, just being there. It's like you if you went into the old Yankee Stadium, like if you went to the bathroom, like you you're basically going down in this like cinder block type room, and, and they just got troughs where everybody just stand. You know, it's it's so basic, and it's like I understand why you know nowadays all these people want their uh, their upgrades and everything. Oh, let's make it a real bathroom. But it had that feel. You know, it's like mm-hmm. motherfucking Babe Ruth fucking played here, fucking. Uh, so many legends, you know, this is the house that Ruth built, you know, that history, you, there's nothing that can compare to it. So it's like, you got all the fancy stadiums nowadays and they're nice and all, but those older stadiums, you know, the history there, you, you, you can't replicate. And I hate the names of the newer state, like little Caesars, like Wells yeah. Fargo, all this shit. It's like, 
you know, the, like the Rosemont Horizon, the Boston Gardens, you know, that shit, that, that's where it was. But they're all, didn't basketball predict predict that? No. When all came those, out? Corporation H Stadium. Yeah. All the corporations just want to put their name on everything. <laughs> it's mostly banks these days. But anyway, yeah, so obviously your clerks recommend Major League. Oh, yeah, definitely get you in the mood for the baseball season. And, you know, like I said, it's got that nice balance of comedy and heart to where, you know, you're going to enjoy it no matter what I think. Nice. Well said. Well, before we get out of here, we will wrap up as we always do with our random clip of the week in which we will play a random clip from a random movie. We'll see what happens, but we'll answer this gentleman's question first. Um, any plans for the panel to watch and review Civil War? That movie terrifies me. Um, but maybe I've heard mixed things. I've, it's kind maybe. of mixed. I almost watched it this weekend. I, I I had signed up earlier this year for a membership with A twenty four, and I guess when you're a member of that, you get like they send you like free tickets oh, nice. for stuff. They sent me a free ticket to go see Civil War over the weekend, and I just never got to. So I, I, I saw the trailer and I was I was definitely curious to mm -hmm. see it. I don't know if we'll end up getting around to watching it or not. But oh, and speaking of trailers, uh, another one that that just came out recently. And I was telling these guys in our chat or whatever is the the Maxine trailer. Oh yeah, and uh, everybody yeah. everybody knows that you know I've been marking it. I've been marking out for Mia Goth and then her performances in X and Pearl. And uh, this fucking trailer for Maxine, uh, fuck, it, it, it just looks so good. I haven't been this hyped, I think, for a movie in, in, in a little while. And people are going to be like, what the fuck? But, like, it, you know, it just, I, I love the 80s yeah. stuff, man. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's just me getting old. But, mm -hmm. like, any time I, I see the 80s, like, I think, remember when American Horror Story was doing uh, that, that 1980s uh season or whatever and just you know the vibe the, how they they did the intros with the old uh music and uh all the old like grainy footage and everything like that it just takes you back you know i'm, I'm like man the fucking 80s were such a fucking awesome time yep. so I'm, I'm i'm super hyped about maxine and i'm not super hyped about joker 2 <laughs> i don't know what the hell to make of that movie yet i just don't know what to make of it like i, I saw somewhere they have there's like a shitload of songs in that movie. I think like 13. Yeah, it's the Night Stalker movie. Yeah. Maxine, the, the Night Stalker is weaved in there. We don't know how it's going to play out yet. Because okay. that was the first time I'd seen anything yeah. in the trailer was when they mentioned the Night And I like how they show the actual news footage of, of the Night Stalker. Yeah. Right. So we'll see how that kind of ties into uh, yeah, Maxine and her quest, her quest for film stardom. But that's coming out in July. We got fucking uh, Alien Romulus Deadpool in August. Coming out. I'm hyped. I'm ready for that. I can't wait for a new Alien movie from the same guy that gave us the Evil Dead remake. I think it's in good hands. Let's go. Dead Deadpool 3 coming out in July. Mm -hmm. So uh, we got some good stuff coming up. It's been a slow start yeah, to the sure. year. And uh, I'm, I'm kind of hyped to, to see what happens here over the summer. So. Uh, oh, oh, God. Uh, Lee Majors. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, let's see. Right. warmed up yet? Uh, yep. Let's see what a random clip generator gave to us this week. Yeah. Yeah. Bull is our business. Bull is our business. A lot of bull in every place. A lot of bull in every place. We reserve the right to refuse service to assholes like you. We reserve the right to refuse service to assholes like you. Is that, is that? Put those cookies back, motherfucker. <laughs> Put those cookies back, motherfucker. Is that sexual chocolate in the front there? <laughs> The fuck am I watching there? <laughs> Sexy job. <laughs> that was a good one. All right, that's it for us. We're getting out of here. Uh, we'll be back live next Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern. What are we getting into next week? Oh, the police academy. Oh, shit, man. That's been mm -hmm. fucking. 
30 years? 40 years. Four? No, get the fuck out of here. Oh, what? my God. Man, God, dude, 84, son of a bitch. You're on, oh, fucker. Oh, now I'm bummed out as well. Well, anyway, so that'll be fun. <laughs> Reporting for duty. Reporting Proctor! For duty. <laughs> Where is Proctor? <laughs> oh, man. Now I'm oh, like that. All right. Fucking, I love Police Academy. That's then we get in touch with Steve Gutenberg. What's he up to? I don't know. I don't know. He's, he had a lot of t- the TikToks and shit popping off lately or yeah. Instagrams or some weird shit. Well, yeah, maybe he'll drop by. I see him it. doing videos all the time now. I'd say most likely we're just going to hang out here and talk about Police Academy. But that's cool. That'll be a good time. Make sure you join us, join us then. Um, if you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe to the Video Clerks YouTube or Twitch channels. We appreciate it. Once again, we are your clerks. I'm Willie Daves Hayes. Wild thing, Chad, man. I'm Mike the Skipper. Leisure. And we are the Video Store Clerks. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next week. Tuesday. <laughs>